Today we're going to talk about 3D sound and how we can manipulate sound in Game Maker to go from left to right. Uh, we can even set how high the sound is. So I've gone ahead and created two sprites. I've got a little zombie sprite that I've created as a player. I've got a sprite that uh, we're going to use as a police car. And I've got two sounds in here. Nothing special about the sounds. It just got a police siren sound. And we got some police chatter, like a radio sound. So we're going to go ahead and set up objects for these sprites. I'm also going to throw in here a background, so I'm going to go grab that real quick. All right, we're going to set this up. And this is 900 by 675, so that's the size we're going to make our rooms. And we'll go ahead and place our objects in the room, the car, as well as our player. And I'm going to put the police car outside of the room here for now. I'll explain why I'm doing that in just a little while. All right, let's check out our sounds real quick. I'm just going to play them. So you can see what we're working with here. And we've got that as a loop. I'm going to turn that loop on here. And that allows us to preview it as a loop. And we're going to do one thing with our sounds that's a little bit different than normal. On the output, we're going to change it from mono to 3D. And we'll do that to each one. And this one's already 3D. So in order to set this up so that we can really see what's going on, we're going to apply some code to our character. And this code that we're putting on right now really has nothing to do with the sound itself and more about just us being able to see what the sound's doing so that we can apply it to our own game. So in a step event for the player, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some code that will allow us to move the player around based on our mouse position. And this will allow us to move him and see what the sound's doing as we get closer to the car, further away from the car, that kind of thing. All right, so all of that's doing is simply allowing us to move our character with our mouse. All right, one other thing we're going to do just for setup purposes is we're going to open up our car. And in the create event for our car, we're going to set the H speed to equal... Let's start with seven. What this will do is this will allow us our car to start moving. And so we've got it going from left to right. So the way we get the audio on the car is we need to set up an audio emitter. And we're going to use the function audio emitter create. And what this does is it returns an index for the emitter. And we're going to store this in the variable. And we'll call that variable car emit. Now it's important to point out at this point when you create these audio emitters that when you're done with them you need to
get rid of them so that you don't end up with a memory leak. And the way we do that and use the function audio emitter free. Now we're not going to leave this in our game right now because simply this is just a tutorial and we're not going to create a full game with this and we really don't care if we get those memory leaks because we're not going to run it long enough to, for it to matter. So the next thing we need to do is set up an audio listener. Now we're going to do that on the player. And we want to create the audio listener in a create event. So we're going to set the audio listener where it's listening from when the player is created. Now this gets a little bit more complicated as far as how this sets up. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in. And GameMaker actually has several different ways to do this. We only have one sound in our game so far. Therefore, we're going to use this audio lis listener orientation. If we had multiple sounds in our game, we would actually use a different method called audio listener set orientation, which allows us to indicate which sound that we want to listen to. So with this, we have to add some coordinates in order for it to work. And we're going to have six sets of coordinates. So we're going to start with this. And then I'll explain what these are, and then we'll change them so that it meets what we want for our game. All right, one other thing we're going to add is in our step event, we have to tell it where the audio listener position is, X, Y, and Z. Now, because this is a 2D game, uh, we're just simply going to set that to be the X, Y of the character itself, so that it follows the character around. And for the Z, we're going to leave that at zero, just because we don't have any height right now. All right, we're going to go back to our car, and we're going to create a few more lines of code here. So the first thing we're going to add in our create event is we're going to turn the sound on. We're going to use the play sound on, audio play sound on, and we're going to use our variable that we created. We're going to tell it which sound we want it to play. which comes from our sounds here. The next piece of that is whether we want it to loop or not, and that's going to be true because we want it to keep playing. And the last one is the priority of the sound, and really you can get away with doing 0 to 1 or 0 to 100. Game Maker is going to go from 0 to 1. So we're going to set that as 1, and we're going to play through our game. Now, if you've been following along with this tutorial, or if you can hear it in your headphones, the sound is just in our head. It's not moving. It's not doing anything other than just playing. And the reason for that is because when we set this player up under the create event, this audio listener orientation sets up where the sound's going to be. Now, I said that we're going to talk about all of these, and we really need to get to understand them. Um, we're going to group them into two different groups the first group of three and the second group of three. Now, obviously, these are coordinates x, y, and z but they mean different things each of the groups. Alright, this is a representation of what's in the game maker documentation 
only a 3D Max, so I can move things around. So when I was showing you the listener orientation with all zeros, this is what we were looking at. So our head op obviously represents the listener position. The blue cylinder represents the look at vector. The green cylinder represents the up vector. And I also have a sphere in here that represents the sound. Now right now the sound is at zero 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 and that's what we had when we put all zeros into the listener orientation. So if we take the sphere which is our audio emitter and we move that sphere leaving it on this plane but over to the right we would rotate the head of the player or the camera or whatever it is that we've got that attached to. So our look at vector would rotate around, but our up vector would stay the same. The problem is, is that when our sound moves off of this plane, now we have to rotate our camera or our player's head in order to point at that sound and if we leave our up vector the same we don't have that 90 degree angle so what we want to do is we want to rotate that to grab that 90 degree angle. All right, for me to explain this, we're actually going to change up the way I've set this up so far. I'm going to pull our car over into our room. I'm going to take the H speed of the car out so that it's a static object right now. And we're also going to add in some fall off. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow our sound to get louder as the car gets closer and it'll get softer the further away the car is from us. So we're going to do an auto audio fall off set model and We're going to do an exponent distance. So as it gets closer, it'll get louder and louder. And we're going to set our audio emitter fall off. And in this, we're going to have several components. Our first component is going to be the actual emitter that we created which is car emit this next number is the fall off reference this is the distance from the object which the sound will drop off by a half so we're going to put in there 30 the next number is the maximum fall off distance in relationship to the listener so that's what is the sound going to do after it hits the fall off reference we're going to put in there 100 for now and then the next number is the fall off factor and we're going to leave that at its default one all right, we're going to create an audio emitter position, and that's going to be on the car. Right now, our car is static. It's not moving. However, later on, we're going to move our car. So we're going to create an event, and we're going to put this in the step event.
and we want to tell it which one we want. So the car emit, and then we're going to put in an X and Y coordinate. Now, because it's going to change with us, we'll just put uh, obj car dot x obj car dot y. And then the last number we need is going to be the height. We'll put that at zero. All right, so now we're going to go back up to our player. And remember, we still have our all zeros placed in our listener orientation. So right now when we play it, we still have the sound right in the middle of our head. All right, so we're going to put the default numbers in here. And the default numbers are set up 1,000 of on the Z of the look at vector. And we're going to put 1 on the Y of the up vector. And what this is going to give us is it's going to give us a 3D sound. However, when we play it, if you can hear it or if you're following along with me, what you'll find is the sound's going to sound like it's actually coming from our player instead of the car. So as our player moves to the left of the car, the sound's going to go to the, to the left. As the player moves to the right of the car, the sound's going to go to the right. This is actually, this is actually wrong because it sounds like the car is listening to the sound and the player is emitting the sound. We want it opposite of that. So in order to make this right, what we're going to do is we're going to change this 1000 on the Z. We're going to move it to the Y. And we're going to move this one from the Y up. and we're going to move it to the Z up. Now when we play it, the sound should be coming from the correct side. So as we move to the left of the car and below it, the sound should be coming from our right side and a little bit high. And as we get close to the car, you should hear it completely on the left side now. And as we get away from it up here, you should hear it on the left side and down a little bit. As we move over to the car this way, you should hear it below you, to the left and below you, completely to the left, and you get the picture. So as we move into the car, the sound should get, be getting louder. And at this point, when we get to the middle of the car back right here, we should hear it come out of both speakers at full volume. Now, the reason why it was full volume at the back of the speaker was because on our sprite, we haven't set the center of the car we have it in the upper left hand corner which is where the sound is emitting from so we're going to come down to middle center and now the sounds coming from the middle of the car and for one last thing we'll do with this car is when we have the car created, we'll set this H speed and we'll pull, pull the car off the screen. And now we should be able to stand still and hear the sound go by with the car. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and put down in the comments if there's other tutorials that you would like for me to do.